Turning now to your community focus, he joins us here once a month on 12 News Now at 4, Rhode Island Attorney General Peter Narona. Thank you as always for your time. Hi, Kim. Good to be here. Um, I want to start with something that your office released today, actually, just this afternoon, some new data connected to violent crime prosecutions for the month of December. Can you walk us through some of the highlights there? Yeah, so it was, uh, you know, we decided that it, the public really ought to know on a month-to-month -month basis the kind of work that's being done around violent crime because sometimes it can fly under the radar screen otherwise. The bottom line is that December, I hate to say it, was sort of a typical month. A uh, number of convictions, 14 guns seized. Uh, over 20 case, new cases brought, five uh, people uh, convicted and sentenced. I mean, the reality is, is that gun violence across the country is up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're no stranger to that here. Uh, but the proactive work that we're doing in connection with our law enforcement partners, I think, is starting to have, in particular, a real impact. When people hear those numbers, you say it's a pretty typical month. I mean, I think some people might be shocked to hear that that kind yeah. of volume is happening every single month, but that's typical. Yeah, well, that's why we're putting it out on a monthly basis now. So mm -hmm. that, I mean, I think, I, I think the public deserves to know um, what the issue is out there and what we're doing about it. And until you kind of see it put it, put it, uh, put together in this way, it's hard to understand the full scope of the problem. It's mm -hmm. why we've taken some of the proactive steps we've taken through our urban cri uh, violent crime initiative to get after these cases, get after these defendants before they shoot somebody. Uh, it's this kind of data that's driving that approach. Um, y there have been some calls recently for your office to invoke something called the habitual sentencing enhancement. It's utilized to increase penalties for right. repeat offenders. A and this comes in light of two uh, alleged DUI crashes where young women were killed on New Year's Day. And the men who allegedly caused those crashes have lengthy criminal histories. Yeah. Should they have been behind bars instead of behind those wheels? Yeah, look, I mean, I think, you know, if you're looking at it through the eyes of the families that were devastated on January 1st, Certainly, from their perspective, um, I can understand you know that sentiment. That's why I feel too. I wish those drivers were anywhere other than where they were on January 1st. You know, the reality is is that people cycle through the ACI. They're in and out. There are 21,000 people on probation uh, today in the state of Rhode Island. If we all had a crystal ball, if judges had a crystal ball, if prosecutors had one, you know, uh, we'd be in a much better place. But we don't have that option. The habitual offender uh, status that you're talking about is something that is available to us as a tool. Uh, to increase potential sentences. The difficulty in at least one of these cases, the one involving Olivia Pazzaretti, is that that was not available to us in this case. The time to have filed that would have been in 2018, mm -hmm. um, before you know, my administration took over. So the situation that we were in uh, when we took office is, here's where we are. We have this case now. We're going to achieve justice for Olivia and Nan, who's the young woman who was killed in the Lincoln crash. And we're going to do everything we can to make sure that justice is served in both of those cases. And speaking of Olivia Passaretti, her family is calling for the suspect in that case, mm -hmm. Aramis Segura, to face a murder charge yeah. in light of some of the things that he posted on social media before that crash occurred. I is that in the realm of possibility for him to be facing a murder charge in this case? Yeah, look, you know, um, the investigation is still ongoing. So, for example, so what's ongoing? The accident reconstruction is, is continuing. Um, through the state police working with our office. We're still tracking down social media accounts. We're still interviewing witnesses. Obviously, murder is an intentional act, a specific intentional act. And so we, we need to know a lot more about how this incident unfolded, this crash unfolded, to be able to make the kind of legal determinations that we need to make. And we have time to do that. The defendant is held without bail um, uh, as a probation violator. And, and I'll say this, in both cases, and in fact in all the cases that we do of this nature, we are committed to achieving justice for these victims and their families. You know, the reality, Kim, is that there's a tremendous number of driving death cases and serious spinal injury cases that happen in Rhode Island. In the last five years, there have been 522 of them. 89 have resulted in deaths. That's an incredibly high number. This is an incredibly difficult uh, problem. You know, it, it's, it, you know, every case you, is an individual case, um, and behind those 89 deaths is a family. That's why we take these cases so seriously. Switching gears to another topic that we've been covering closely and discussing also with you here on 12 News at 4, the former North Kingstown basketball coach, Aaron Thomas, who's accused of conducting those uh, naked fat tests on student athletes. Last night, the town solicitor in NK said the attorney general might impanel a grand jury yeah. in your criminal investigation into this. Is that where your investigation is heading? Well, look, there's, you know, I've said before, we're doing a criminal investigation in this case. You know, when you use the grand jury, it is typically to develop evidence to make sure that you're able to put witnesses under oath. 
Um, and so sometimes we use it, sometimes we have to use it, depending on the kind of case. I don't know that this case will fall into that category. We could use it, but the bottom line is, regardless of what tools we use to investigate it, we are going to get to the bottom of the conduct, um, and if necessary, bring whatever charges are appropriate. Uh, the Rhode Island U.S. Attorney launched a civil investigation into the North Kingstown School District. Can you talk about the interplay between yeah. that federal investigation and what your office is doing? Yeah, so I've spoken to the, the new U.S. attorney about that, and, um, and um, look, you know, the, they're looking at it from sort of an institutional civil rights perspective, uh, meaning did the school function in the way that it should, as, as I understand their theory from my conversations with the, with the U.S. attorney. You know, our, our investigation is different. We want to understand what happened here and whether any criminal laws were violated. You know, Coach Thomas is entitled to the presumption of innocence. He hasn't been charged with anything. Our job is to investigate this matter completely and then make whatever determinations we need to make, need to make at the end of it. Another big topic that we've been keeping our eye on, the um, proposed merger between mm -hmm. Lifespan and Care New England. Uh, your office released the application just before the new year yep. in late December. Um, when can we expect public hearings to begin on that? What else should the public know about that process because it, it is a, a big proposal. Yeah, look, you know, we expect to have public hearings this month and perhaps early into February. There will be at least two. I think we're in the process of scheduling a third. We want public input. Um, it's why we made uh, much of the application uh, public. Um, you know, our process is continuing. I was in a very lengthy meeting today talking about this very issue. The good news is for Rhode Islanders, we have an excellent team here that is, that is working really hard to understand what this transaction would mean for Rhode Islanders. You know, there are three potential options here. You and I have talked about this before, which is to, to not approve it, to approve it with conditions, or approve it as proposed. I'll say this, that when we reach the end of our analysis, we are going to have a product that will explain to Rhode Islanders what we found and what we think the implications of that is. Attorney General Peter Nerona, that is all the time we have today. Thank you so much for being here as always. Thanks for having me, Kim.